Hi, and thanks for following the Bite Size Beginner's Guide to the HP Reverb G2. Today, we're going to be diving a little bit more into the mixed reality software, pairing your controllers, and also preparing your play space with some cool tips and tricks. So, let's go. By the way, a big welcome to, to VR Essentials. We talk about VR educational entertainment and the practical uses of virtual reality. It's very nice to meet you if you're here to the platform for the first time. And of course, a big welcome back to all our regular subscribers. It's always awesome to have you here among us. In the previous two videos, I showed you how to download Steam and the mixed reality software as well as connecting your PC VR headset to your computer. But today, as the title suggests, we're here to talk more about the Mixed Reality software. So without further ado, let's begin. If you are continuing from the previous video and you would have switched on the power for the very first time, you would see the Mixed Reality pop-up that came up on your screen. Now, just in case you do have multiple monitors, make sure that you switch off all the ones that you're not going to need because you're going to want your graphics card to power as much of all the juice straight into the VR headset as you possibly can. You should also notice after you've switched on your power for the very first time that the logo on the front of the VR headset should actually be illuminated. Going back to the Mixed Reality software on your PC, you'll notice there's some initial terms and conditions there. You can also click on the link which will redirect you to all the various different terms of agreement. But once you're comfortable, just click I agree and it will lead you to the next screen. On the next screen, it will basically give you some details as to your specs of your computer to let you know whether there's anything that you've done that perhaps is missing and of course also it tells you what graphics card you have what cpu what usb what ram and all these kind of different things now we'll be posting a new video in the future about the system requirements that you do need to have for the hp reverb g2 but do go to the link in the description below the like button which will redirect you to that page on the official hp's website depending on the time that you watch this video of course the various different screens and setup may change so do bear that in mind but the next screen that we see at the moment in time is basically a welcome screen where you can see the hp reverb g2's vr headset when you click next on the bottom right hand side you'll see on the next screen that you'll basically be given some basic information about what's where on the actual VR headset itself do take a few moments just to study it. And then once you're comfortable, click next again. Now this is when things are going to get very exciting because you're going to pair your controllers for the very first time to your VR headset. Now all you have to do is very simple. Go back to your play space where you put your VR headset and then click and hold the Windows logo button on the controller until you see the LEDs starting to flash. Once you've done that, go back to Mixed Reality software on your PC and then click on the next button. You'll see they'll be providing you some basic information about the controllers as well. So please, by all means, study this for a couple of minutes before moving on. Now, HP provide a couple of different ways to set up your boundary. The first one would be more of a stationary position. For example, if you're going to be doing some Assetto Corsa Competizione or some Dirt Rally or perhaps some other VR flights kind of VR experiences, then you can go with that. Or if you're going to be using other VR experiences, for example, Half-Life Alyx or VR Chat, then it's recommended to use the other option. And for the purpose of this video, let's go with the recommended setting. On the next screen, you'll see that HP recommends a play space size of at least five by seven feet, which translates to 1.5 meters by two meters or thereabouts. But honestly, if you really want to have a decent gameplay, I highly recommend you have two by two, or at least if you can, three by three meters. Now, before we proceed to the next screen, just make sure that your play space is free from any clutter whatsoever. This is really important. And also equally take out any form of cables on the floor that might be around and just make sure that your play space is safe. Another quick tip is how to set up your lights very quickly. Now, I will be doing a dedicated video on what kind of lights to get and how to set them up. So do be part of the notification squad by enabling the notification bell after you hit subscribe so you don't miss that video. As you can tell in my play space, I make sure that the lights are not directed directly towards the VR headset. They're actually directed towards the wall for the photons to bounce around. And also for the ceiling lights, same thing. Make sure that whatever lights you might be using at the top there, they're not directly directly to you. If you can move, for example, if you have LEDs like I do, move them so that they face the other direction. All right, now things are getting very exciting because it's time to actually create the boundary. So what HP is going to ask you to do is face the headset towards the actual PC. Now, because you're going to have to go back and forth to your computer and the headset, what I suggest you do is just get a chair, maybe place the HP box on the chair or stool if your chair is too low, and then just place the headset and the controllers on top of that. All right, once you're done with that, go back to your computer and then click on center, which will lead you to the next screen. Now, by the way, it might take some time for everything to calibrate between screens at this moment in time. So if you're going to be waiting 10 to 30 seconds between screens, don't worry, it's absolutely normal. Once you've loaded the next screen, you'll see a little animation showing you how to do the tracing. So 
On the left hand side you'll see a little character holding the actual VR headset and then on the right hand side you'll see a little icon showing you the direction at which the VR headset is being pointed at. And then when you're ready just simply click on trace and then go back to your play space, pick up your VR headset and then start tracing around. And then just a quick tip as you're tracing around your area to make sure that your cable doesn't get entangled into your stool if your stool is still in your play space and then of course make sure that you don't trip also. Now to avoid having to do this several times, although I do suggest some patience, when you reach the end, make sure that the end does connect with the beginning. Otherwise, the software is not going to think that your play space has been connected. Also, you may want to avoid putting the headset back in the middle of the play space before you go back to the computer to click continue. And then once you go back to your mixed reality software, just double check the play space shape that you just traced. And then once you're comfortable, just click accept to continue to the next step. And then once you have clicked on accept, the next screen will basically be a basic registration page where you just put which country you're based and also email address, which means that you'll be receiving some news undoubtedly by HP or updates directly in your inbox if you hadn't already registered with them. Now in the next screen, you'll get more information about using speech with the mixed reality software. Now I would choose wisely if I were you, do make sure that you read all the terms and conditions there because it does say that basically HP and Windows can track whatever you say and store it and record it. So even though of course it's for the purpose to better the VR hardware and the software, I personally am not very comfortable with that, so I'm going to opt out at this moment in time. Alright, so one of two things are going to happen here after you put your headset on. You're either going to see a welcome screen, which basically asking you to click on something to go to the next step, which looks very similar to what you saw on your PC, or you're going to see something completely black. Now, if you see a dark screen, don't worry so much. It's absolutely normal for a lot of us. And I'm going to guide you as to how you can change that. In the dark area, you should be able to see your boundary. However, if you think that your boundary is really too low, don't worry so much. Just click on the notification bell after you hit subscribe, because I'm going to show you how to adjust your boundary in the next video. You can also extend your arm style and you'll see that basically you'll be able to see the limit of your boundary as you move around your arms on the boundary itself. So as I mentioned, what you should really be seeing is a welcome screen by the Mixed Reality software, which you saw on your PC directly inside of your VR headset. So in order to do that, just remove your VR headset, go back to your computer onto the Mixed Reality software. If you find that nothing's happening after you're moving your mouse and you can't access the PC, then just make sure that you click and hold on the Windows logo key and also the Y key together and that will enable you to access your PC again. Now scroll down all the way to where you see the hamburger three dot icon on the bottom left hand side of your screen on the Mixed Reality software. Choose settings and then this will lead you to the actual settings page. Now go straight to the display tab. Now make sure that visual quality and also your Mixed Reality resolution are both set to automatic. Now when you click on that and you're going to be changing the specs, you'll see that you might have to wait 10 to 30 seconds. So don't worry so much. This is absolutely normal. Okay, now this is what should happen. First, close that window and go back to the original home mixed reality pop-up that you have on your screen. Now I suggest that you magnify that pop-up if you haven't done so already and scroll down all the way to where you see a play button and then click on it. Now what's going to happen is going to show you a preview of actually what you see inside of your HP Reverb G2. All right, so now you're all set up, although there are a couple more things to do, including how to set up the audio properly so you don't have any issues of any kind. So let's meet up in the next video together so I can show you how to do exactly just that. Let's go.